Hello folks, it's uh, Mark Davis from uh, Tactical Edge here. So I thought I'd do a, a little video, I just finished um, kids classes, tidied up a little bit. So I was going to do a short video. And what I wanted to speak about tonight was um, awareness and proximity. Two very, very, very important uh, parts of our overall kind of self-defence toolbox. Now... Um, a lot of martial arts instructors, when they're teaching self-defense, um, I'm not talking about specifically combatives instructors. I'm talking about just your general martial arts instructors. Um, most of them will teach, when they're teaching self-defense, they will teach um, what we term hard skills. Okay, what happens when somebody attacks you, when you know, the bad guy does this, you do that. All right? But a very often overlooked um, part of what we're... What is a vital part of self-defense, is teaching people about awareness, all right? Easy thing about awareness, or the easy way to think about awareness, sorry, is awareness is like um, a battleship's radar, yeah? And the radar's on, it knows where everything is around it, it can identify threats, the radar is down, it doesn't take long for somebody to put a sea-skimming missile up its backside. So awareness is super important. But like anything else, we need to train it. We need to cultivate it. So how do we do that? How do we train awareness? Um, so a saying that you'll hear me say an awful lot is, you are what you do repeatedly. We are what we do repeatedly. So we need to actually practice being aware. Um, so a good way that we learned about awareness, uh, I'm going way back to the late 80s when I um, started uh, going through my VIP protection training, was um, we used the drill that was used in uh, advanced driving, yeah? So um, in advanced driving, what, we would, what would be done would be, you'd be driving along, you would have your instructor sitting beside you, and while you're driving along, you give the instructor um, a running commentary of everything you saw up ahead, all the, the threats, the danger points, um, everything that you're... You, you wanted to see to be able to preempt problems, yeah? And you'd be driving along, and like I say, it's a verbal commentary. Now, what uh, when we're talking about developing awareness for self-defense, um, then what we're going to do is a very, very similar thing. Um, now, I'm not saying I want you to walk down the street speaking to yourself. Um, I, I'm walking down the street. Up ahead, I see a group of youths. They might mean me harm, and there's an alleyway there. Oh, somebody might be standing there. Oh, look, there's a car. There's somebody sitting in the car. Because you're walking along speaking to yourself, everyone's going to think you're completely bonkers. Okay? Might be a good thing. People might leave you alone. Nobody's going to attack you if they think you're a complete fruitcake. Okay? But joking aside, what we want to do is keep an internal dialogue going. So we start off by speaking, basically in our heads, saying to ourselves what we are seeing around us and looking actively looking, that's the thing, actively looking for um, places that could be danger points, yeah? So you're looking for those doorways, alleyways, corners. So you're, uh, so you're saying to yourself what you're seeing up ahead, and you're also saying to yourself what you're going to do about it, yeah? So you're going to walk wide of the corner. It could be somewhere around the corner, I'm going to walk wide of the corner. Um, I'm going to, you know, there's a car parked there, um, there's somebody in the passenger seat. Uh, I'm going to go wide of the car. There's a car parked there. Engine is running. I can't see anybody in it. And there might be somebody uh, ducked down. I'm going to cross the road, go wide of it. All this sort of stuff. So these are standard things that you teach people when you're teaching self-defense, okay, women's self-defense courses and stuff. So what we want to do is start actually actively doing it. So pretty soon... Once we've been doing this for a while, what happens is you stop actually having to keep that internal dialogue going. You, it starts happening subconsciously because we are what we do repeatedly. So because we're doing this all the time, within a few weeks, you're doing it automatically. You're noticing things. You're using shop shop windows, reflection shop windows to check six, car mirrors and windows to check six. You're looking in cars. You're looking for unusual movement. You're looking for things that just aren't right. You're looking for choke points that you may want to avoid or be cautious as you go past or go through. Now, another very important factor, though, is you need to give yourself permission to actually take action. 
Yeah, that's the problem. A lot of people might spot things, spot danger, spot potential problems, but they just keep going into it. Yeah, so a really important part of this is actually doing something about it. If you see something that isn't right, you do something about it. Okay, you change route, you walk wide, you cross the road. Okay, um, it's things like you know noticing when somebody's behind you. And is it part of the normal rhythm, the normal kind of um, life in that area? And the thing is, when you're practicing this, especially around places that you live, you work, that you frequent an awful lot, you start learning what the normal heartbeat of that area is. So you spot when something's not right. Um, so it means you can start doing you know, really basic tradecraft stuff. So if I think that there's some, if I think I'm being followed, I'll take a series of, say, right turns or left turns, yeah? So if I turn a, uh, turn a corner, turn down a corner or something, and um, the person turns with me, then the spidey senses start to tingle. So I take another turn. If the person turns with me again, I'm really starting to think, okay, there's something up here. If I take a third turn and he's still with me, I know there's something up, okay, and I need to do something about it, okay? And bear in mind, What's our goal in self-defense? Seek safety, okay? If there's shops or anything nearby, go in a shop. Go where there are people, okay? Raise alarm. Text somebody. Use your mobile phone, all right? All the, the all basic self-defense stuff, okay? But we need to get used to doing it um, in our everyday lives and doing it automatically, yeah? So where does this take us with proximity? Well, if I am aware and I know who's around me, what's around me, then I should be able to notice when there's somebody approaching me that I don't know and I'm thinking, okay, there's something a bit funny here. Why? You know, we've got all this, all this room around me. Why is this person head straight towards me? Yeah. And once again, it's giving yourself permission to do something about it. And that doesn't mean you have to be jumping back into your, your, your passive guard and screaming at them to back off and stuff, but it just means move, cross the road, go wide turn around, go a different direction and stuff, see what they do, okay? Little tricks like, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm if i walking, uh, you know, uh, and I use, this, I use this myself in uh, some of my old jobs, so to speak, um, if there's somebody behind me and I'm wondering what their intentions are and stuff, and I, I don't have the ability to, you know, like say, take a few turns and see if they're following me and things, it's things like saying, okay, I'm just going to turn around, walk straight towards them, looking at them and see how they react. Yeah, um, walk straight towards them and say and say something to them. You know, um, pretend that you know them or something. Oh, sorry, my mistake. I don't know who you are. See how they react. And the thing is, a lot of bad guys and things, if they think the game is up and they're rumbled, will try to escape. They're not, you know they're they're not looking for a fight. They're looking for a victim. Yeah. So these are all good things that you do that are tradecraft. Um, proximity is really important. And that's the thing. Never ever think that proximity is not important when it comes to self defense. I'll give you an example. But I was. Um, going back to the 90s here, and I was um, doing door work in a place where weapons carrying was endemic at a time when weapons carrying was a problem and gang problem, uh, gangs were a problem and stuff. And uh, one of the door staff had had issues with a, a local um, fairly senior drug dealer. And um, this guy had decided that uh, he wanted this guy uh, marked. Yeah. So uh, night had gone by, normal, normal night and all the rest of it, just your normal idiot, drunken idiots and usual little issues that you have to deal with. So guys at front house greeting, every, uh, kind of saying goodnight to everybody as they go past and um, no awareness, yeah, and it really bit him. So he stood there, guy that he'd never seen before, nobody knew, walks up to him, acting kind of friendly, walks up and goes, See you later, pal. Taps him on the face. Turns around, face is opened up from here to here. I mean, wide open. Guy had a razor blade in his, between his fingers. Yeah? And this was quite a common thing that the bad boys used to do at that point. Stick a razor blade between fingers, and uh, if I slap you, it's going to open you up like you've never seen. If I even just touch you, it's going to open you up. So if they wanted to mark you, and the thing is, a lot of the times, these guys, they didn't want to kill you. They didn't want to do anything like that. What they wanted to do was leave a mark on you, you know? You can kind of think of it like, um, you know, the Native Americans counting coup sort of thing. They wanted to physically mark you. So, the, so 
couple of razor blades strapped together or a couple of Stanley, Stanley knife blades taped together. When they slice you like that, it leaves a double stripe that's guaranteed to leave a scar. Okay? So, proximity. All right? Don't be shy if somebody's walking up. Sorry, somebody walking past outside. If um, somebody's walking up to me, I don't know who they are, I will move. Okay? If they continue to walk towards me at that point, I'm going to say something to ask them to stop, okay, to make sure they, they know that I'm uncomfortable. If they don't stop, then I will make them stop, yeah? Um, I will tell them forcibly, you know, oh, stop where you are, pal. I don't know who you are, okay? What are you after? What do you want, yeah? And very often we are too bothered about being polite and being nice to worry about our own safety, yeah? Okay, and your safety is more important than anybody's feelings or politeness. Yeah, so proximity is important. Um, something that happened to me numerous times when I was working uh, back in the bad old days was, um, you know, if somebody uh, somebody was really want, you know wanted to, to take you out, they wouldn't pull a knife out, brandish it, and yeah, I'm gonna get you and act all aggressive. They would just walk. You know, they would be walking up, walking past and keep walking, okay? So everyone's attention is on you because you're the one that's been stabbed and you're falling to the ground and they're off into the crowd, yeah? So once again, awareness. Spotting people that you don't know approaching you and just not letting them get close enough to both stick something in you or sucker punch you or something. Basic awareness and proximity, okay? So... That's my little blether over for the night. I hope you maybe find something useful in there. And uh, we'll see you another time. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye.